Hello everyone, it's Matt from Akuma Mods, back again with our review of the Mingda Magician X. Alright, so Mingda sent us this uh, printer a little while ago, uh, and I've been just kind of slacking a little bit on, on the whole review aspect of it, but... Uh, it's been a fantastic printer so far. As you can tell, the profile is set up very similar to those of like the Focus Odin, um, the BQB1. They're all similar designed machines. And now there's also the Creality Ender 3 S1. Now, me personally, I really like this machine for one big main reason. As you can see, I use a lot of resin printers in the back here and I tend to utilize USB sticks. Well, this printer actually allows you to use a USB stick. Not only that, you can also use a regular SD, uh, SD card size uh, slot. It is a normal size SD card. Uh, there is also a USB-C connection as well, which means hopefully this board can support higher speed transferring, which is, would be a game changer in the community. Now, I haven't tested that aspect because me personally, just for stuff in the past, I have not done that ever. Um, it's just been kind of like something I never really like doing because there's always been an issue, whether data transfer gets corrupted or the, uh, the printer itself just, you know, kind of dies because of a window update. So I don't ever suggest hooking your printer directly up to your computer unless you turn off automatic updates or it's not online or whatever it may be, um, just don't do it like that. But yeah, definitely one of the major things that is a selling point for me on this machine is the fact that it uses a USB drive. Uh, some other points to talk about. Um, we do have a ribbon style cable here. So it seems to be that we don't really have a major issue with how far it goes. So I know a lot of people have issues uh, with other printers like the artillery printers and the focus printers that have these style of ribbon cables that tend to snap or break. I have not seen any issues with this at all. And it is slightly different the way that it connects. It uses like a, uh, a JST style connector uh, or a DuPont connector. And uh, so it seems to be a little bit more strengthened for that use. So that's really, really nice. This is a direct drive printer. So for any of you guys that are looking to print TPU, this is perfect right out of the box. That's really the only need to have uh, a direct drive system is just to print a little bit easier. I'm not saying that that's absolutely your go-to for someone who wants to print flexible material. You can do that on a Bowden setup perfectly fine. And uh, that's basically... Um, it just basically makes it easier for you to print on a uh, direct drive system than it is a boat. So just putting that out there. Now, I do have a print on here. I didn't take it off because I wanted to show you guys in a review if it actually worked. I printed several of these things on several different machines, and all of them seem to not come out. So I'm hoping that this one does. We'll see. I did not tune anything. I did not play with any settings on the, the printer. I don't like to do that because, well, then that makes that not the printer out of the box. So this printer has all its stock settings that it possibly can have, and we're basically going to go from there. So um, the other great thing is um, one of the spool holders here is kind of nice because it actually, you can swap it to this side. So it's kind of ambidextrous, so to speak. So that's really, really nice. Uh, you do have a little bit larger bed volume than most of the printers in its class range. Uh, supposedly, this has a 230 by 230, whereas most of them are like 220, 225. Um, I know the Ender series, depending on which one you choose, some of them say 220, some of them say 235. I, I don't know what it exactly is. I never really measured it. So I guess I can really... If I wanted to measure it online to be safe, then sorry and see if, you know, their marketing is correct. So let's do that right now. So this is actually 234. So the 230 is actually pretty accurate. That'll give you some room to play and everything like that. So 
Uh, that's pretty good, and it is squared, so I'm I'm gonna take it that that's two thirty four point seven five technically, so it's it's two thirty five. But uh, the other thing is, it says that it's two hundred and sixty by two hundred and sixty height millimeter. God, I can talk today. Um, so that's that's a very nice size. We do have some adjustment knobs for the belts, which are very very nice to make sure that you are always have that tightness on there. Uh, that's always a problem that I see people having, and they just kind of pass it up. They don't realize that the belts need to be tightened down all the time. So you can easily tighten them down on the fly at any point in time, even while it's printing, and it's perfectly fine. Another great selling point for this printer is that it does have auto leveling, and it does probe the points. It is a little bit slow because it's like uh, it's not. It doesn't have a BL touch. It's got like a capacitive sensor on it so um but it is very very slow like a bl touch so um it, it's not terrible it does get a, a good accuracy reading i've not had any issues with leveling on this so far i've done quite a few prints i'm going to show some of them off obviously this one as well and again hopefully that one's good um and basically um i'm just going to show you guys through the machine and and some of the other uh things that i like about it uh, another big thing is it does have a dual Z access, which seems to be a common thing nowadays, which I am absolutely grateful for. That makes bed leveling so much easier because I can't tell you how many times that somebody has posted up on my group saying, hey, you know, I have an issue with leveling. One side is level, the other side isn't, and that's basically where it goes. So uh, I see that quite often. So that does help out quite a bit in terms of leveling, so you don't have the sagging gantry issue, which plagues tons of printers, especially the larger ones. Basically, anything that's of larger size than this should have a dual Z by now. If the small ones can have it, the big ones should. I personally would pay the extra, you know, fifty dollars even to have that uh, added onto my machine from the factory. So for anybody that's listening, that's a manufacturer. Please, please, just add a dual Z. It makes life so much easier for everybody, okay? So um, let's go ahead and show off some of the prints that I've done and uh, some of the other ones that I had. Unfortunately, the uh, my little girl ran away with, so they're somewhere in the house. I have no idea where. But uh, I got at least three prints here that I can show off and, you know, basically have you guys look at and you know, determine on whether or not it's a good quality or not. I think they're pretty good. So uh, this one is like a little dragon. Obviously, it looks like uh, Toothless from How to Train Your Dragon. And for some reason, this mechanism just doesn't work. I've tried printing this on several different printers, and it doesn't work 100%. Like, it kind of flaps them a little bit. It's supposed to basically flap them like this, and it doesn't really do it. But it prints completely flat like this, right off the build plate. No supports, nothing, and everything printed perfectly fine. I have no issues besides that that little mechanism that doesn't really work. But what's weird is you can move the wings up and down, so I'm not really sure what's going on. But you can go ahead and stand them up and have them sit like that, so it's kind of cool. It's a really, really nice print. Um, I forget who makes this. I need to start remembering people's names and giving them credit too, but I will leave links down to, uh, down in the description. Oh, geez, I can't talk uh, today, and um, I'll uh, yeah, I'll just link them so you guys can go ahead and download them and print them out. Uh, the other one is you guys, uh, if for you people who are on TikTok, you know all about the the dragon. I think it's by Cinder Wagon or something like that. Um, basically, it's an articulated dragon, so. We did another one of those, and this one was a multicolor filament. This is by Yusu, and uh, it's their rainbow filament, and it came out very, very nice. I have no issues with it whatsoever. Everything is super articulated. We see we have a little bit of uh, stringing there. Actually, that's dog hair. My bad. Um, but yeah, it goes all the way down, and, and pretty much his entire tail, all the way down to the last piece, um, wiggles. So it's very, very nice. Prints in place, no supports needed. I really, really like those designs that you can just print in place. Case in point right here. So we're going to go ahead and use our trusty scraper here. 
kind of hard to do this because this table is very wobbly and I put it on. You watch, of course, I won't be able to get this thing off. No worries. We have we have our trusty scraper to the rescue. There. Oh my god, it works! It works. <laughs> so for the first time ever, it's it works. I don't know if it fully works, but I felt it come out. So whenever I printed these, these are the print and play swords. And again, I don't really like to make weapons. But this one's kind of cool. It's something for the kids to play with. Uh, you will never see uh, guns on my channel. The, this is about as far as I go for making weapons. But um, again, I just wanted to point it out that this is a stock profile. Nothing has been changed on it. Uh, basically, I took an Ender 3 profile from Cura, imported it, changed some of the uh, settings for the bed size and everything. Apologies for the camera. And uh, that's basically where we went from there. So Without further ado, let's uh, let's see if it works. Ah, it kind of works. Actually, it works. It worked for the first time. It worked. Now we still need to stretch it out a little bit. Oh, I think one of the pieces didn't. Oh, there we go. But usually, I end up like trying to break these things because they're always stuck in the hilt, and I can't get them out ever. So this is successful to me. Uh, so this is a great print for anybody that's looking to uh, have some fun with the kids. You know, obviously, if you bash these together, they're probably going to break into a million pieces, but it's still something fun to uh, to have for the kids and, you know, mess around with. And even if for the adults, I mean, come on, who doesn't want something like this in their collection? This is awesome that this printed. I am so ecstatic. Yeah, oh, you can't believe this. So I absolutely love that. But yeah, print and play stuff. I absolutely love doing a lot of the print and plays. Very, very simple on an FDM printer. So, um, I mean, pretty straightforward. But uh, other than that, I mean, I don't really have too many bad things to say about this. In fact, I don't, I don't really have anything. Um, I know in the past that I've worked with Mingda with their D3. Uh, this was before their Rock Pro. And it was an okay printer. It had some issues here and there. Um, and they did send me a file to update their firmware, but I didn't update it. It works perfectly fine. So as usual, why fix something or try to fix something if it's not broken in general? So I'm just going to leave a V until I absolutely need that update done. But as of right now, it's been printing perfectly fine. And I've had several different spools of filament on this. Uh, at least four different spools uh, ran through completely. Amazon return stuff. That's that's basically what this is. This is an open box item that I got from Yusu uh, that was Amazon return. It was all wound it up and I just rewound it by hand and it printed perfectly fine. So uh, I, I just don't understand why some people do that. But hey, um, I will leave links in the description below of how much this printer is. Currently, right now on Amazon, as I'm making this video, they are going for $349. Now, that is a little bit of a steep price tag for some people who are getting into this community or printing experience. Uh, but I will say, if you spend the extra $100 and step up your game, you got a printer that's ready to go right out of the box, gives you very little issues. Again, this is direct drive, you got a glass bed. You have the ability to use a USB drive, a normal size SD card. You have some storage here in the front, which is a little weird because it's under the bed. But you can still access this uh, under, under the bed if it's printing. It does come with an extra nozzle, some extra tools, a nice little um, wrench, an actual like nice wrench. Not those cheap ones. A silicone sock, which I couldn't get on to save my soul. Um, so we'll try and put that on at some point, but uh, it's been pretty good so far. Again, I can't really complain about it. Uh, it's got a nice little touch user interface, you know, very, very basic. Um, you know, you have your move, your home extrude, your percentages, Z offset, fans, settings, you know, all kinds of different stuff. You can turn out, turn on the, uh, the filament runout detection, which is also a great feature to have. Again, this is basically an all-in-one package. So you have auto-leveling, dual-Z, glass bed for those who like it. Me, I'm kind of so-so on it. I like PEI flex sheets. 
Um, yeah, so direct drive, dual Z, um, blast bed, touch screen, USB disc available. I mean, that's really the, the major points of it. Can add on auto leveling system. For some people, that's kind of so-so. But for those who don't want to struggle with bed leveling, this is on the cheap. $349 right now on Amazon.com US. And uh, that's, what, $30 cheaper than the Creality uh, Ender 3 S1. And the Ender 3 S1 is built off of the same platform. It's the same company that makes all these printers for various companies nowadays. And the S1 is, you know, Creality's version of it, but it's $30 more. So I'm going to go with this. It's going to be cheaper, and I'm going to get the same effects. But the other thing is I'm not going to have to deal with the BL Touch and having to worry about replacing that pin because you do have to replace those pins on the BL Touch and the CR Touch. So this has a capacitive touch. You don't need to do anything like that. So it is great. I Like I said, I've had no issues with it. Um, you can swap the uh, filament from one side to the other. There's a little locking mechanism. You just slide it back, pop it off as I break things, and put it on that side if you want. Simple as that. So very, very simple and straightforward to do everything. And it's been a great printer. I have not had any issues with it so far. The direct drive system seems to be a, a fairly okay version of like a uh, Bontech one. So it is a dual gear drive one. And uh, I want to say the hot end is like a V5. I, I couldn't really see uh, what type of hot end it's got in it, but that's what it looks like to me. And, uh, you know, you can basically have everything that you want right out of the box for a good price basically. So um, be it with what you want with those uh, with that information. But uh, for me personally, that that's a very, very good buy. So if you guys are in the market looking for a great starter printer for 2022, the Mingda Magician X basically has everything that you need for a budget price. So I personally think this is the winner for this year so far. Obviously, the year is still fresh. It's still new. There's going to be models that come out that are very similar to it. Um, but this is an all-in-one package for an amazing price. So I hope you guys like the review. If you do, go ahead and hit that thumbs up. Um, if you guys are not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Every little bit helps. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, until next time, happy printing.